and a very good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our trivia time here on our Oceana Facebook page. I hope you're doing well today. I hope you're having a fantastic start to your summer. It is warm out there, everyone, so make sure you're getting plenty of water, staying safe, using that sunscreen. And of course, I hope to see you uh, soon on one of Oceana's ships. I can't wait to get started, and I know you can either. And I can't wait to do a trivia live uh, and have all the fun and the camaraderie with all of you uh, but we are doing another round of virtual trivia here and of course uh, I am this week's host and this week I'm gonna go for a mixed grab bag of trivia if you will a potpourri of trivia so uh, various subject matter today we're gonna do 10 questions and uh, hopefully you get all 10 right I'm sure you will and uh, so why don't we just go ahead and get started shall we have you warmed up enough okay because it's never good to do any kind of activity without warming up properly. So I hope you warmed up. All right. Um, and we're going to start, since the Olympics are around the corner, I'm going to start with an Olympics trivia question on number one, Olympics slash geography. We're talking Olympic cities. Okay, so here's my question. Which city is the only city to host the modern day Olympics three times? Which city is the only city to host the modern day Olympics three times? All right, so take a moment to think about that one and I'll be back with the answer. Okay, so the city that is the only city to have hosted the Olympics, uh, modern day Olympics three times, is the city of London, England. That's right, London hosted 1908, 1948, and of course 2012. So congratulations if you got that one correct. Okay, moving on. Question number two. Question number two, the category I would say would be icons. Um, fictional icons, if you will. All right, here's the question. Ruth Handler invented this famous character in 1959 and named her after her daughter, Barbara. Once again, Ruth Handler invented this famous character in 1959 and named her after her daughter, Barbara. Okay, the answer for number two is Barbie or the Barbie doll. That's right. So Ruth Handler invented Barbie in 1959. All right, so moving on to question number three. Number three, we're going to literature. Okay, so we're going to Charles Dickens here. That's a good subject in literature. I enjoy a Charles Dickens book. And we're going to Great Expectations. What does the eccentric Miss Havisham constantly wear in Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. Once again, what does the eccentric Miss Havisham constantly wear in Great Expectations? Take a moment to think about it. Okay, so uh, the um, eccentric Miss Havisham constantly wears her wedding dress. All right, her wedding dress. Uh, didn't go a day without it. All right, so congratulations if you got that one correct. All right, so moving on to question number four. Number four, we are in the category of film, classic film actresses. What classic film actress is famous for saying this following line? Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a bumpy night. Once again, what classic film actress is famous for saying the following line? Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a bumpy night. So go ahead and think about that answer. Hey, I'll give you a bonus point if you tell me what film it's from as well. All right, so we'll be back with the answer. And 
the answer to question number four. Of course, I am looking for Betty Davis. Betty Davis eyes, that's right. And in the film, she said, fasten your seatbelts, it's gonna be a bumpy night. That's from All About Eve. So congratulations if you got that one correct. All right, moving on to question number five. Number five. Uh, we're going to uh, languages and word origins here. Uh, lending the word sauna to the English language. Suomi, S-U-O-M-I. Suomi is one of the official tongues of what Scandinavian country? So once again, lending the word sauna to the English language. Suomi is one of the official tongues of what Scandinavian country? Take a moment to think about that. Okay, so the answer I'm looking for, Suomi is one of the official tongues of Finland. All right, Finland is the answer. So congratulations if you got that one. Number six, we're going to the animal kingdom here. Uh, you, you can play your own peacock sound if you would like. Uh, number six, due to its venomous bite, this African reptile is widely considered to be one of the world's deadliest snakes. Not to be confused with a type of Cuban dance, what is the name of this cousin to the cobra? Once again, due to its venomous bite, this African reptile is considered to be one of the world's deadliest snakes. Not to be confused with a type of Cuban dance, what is the name of the cousin of the cobra? Take a moment. Okay, back with the answer for number six. And of course, I'm looking for a mamba or even a black mamba. All right, so congratulations. If you got that one right, you know your snakes. All right, so moving on, number seven. Number seven category is music. And we're going to marching bands. In a marching band, what is the portable version of the tuba called? Once again, in a marching band, what is the portable version of the tuba? The answer for number seven, I am looking for sousaphone, the sousaphone. That's right. That is the portable version that wraps around your body while you walk and play it. All right. So moving on. Number eight. Number eight. Uh, let's do a little history here. Um, I'm looking for a century. It's widely considered that this century was the beginning of the Renaissance. So what century did the Renaissance begin? Take a moment to think about that. Okay, the answer I am looking for, the Renaissance began in the 14th century. Widely considered that it began in the 14th century. All right, congratulations if you got that one correct. If you disagree, well, we'll talk about it when we're on board sometime. Okay, so moving on. Question number nine. Number nine, we are going to the category of fish and food. That would equal seafood. All right, so here's our question. Also known as dolphin fish, what tasty ocean dweller has a name in Hawaiian that means very strong? or quite literally, strong, strong. Once again, also known as dolphin fish, what tasty ocean dweller has a name in Hawaiian that means very strong, or quite literally, strong, strong. Okay, the 
answer I'm looking for here of this Hawaiian fish is of course the mahi-mahi, a very delicious fish. All right, so moving on. Question number 10. Number 10. Okay, so category is coming in last, which I hope you didn't today. All right, so um, here is our question for number 10. If you were to list the chemical elements in alphabetical order, which element would be listed last? Once again, if you were to list the elements in alphabetical order, which element would be listed last? Take a moment to think about that. Okay, so the answer to our final question, question number 10, I am looking for alphabetically the last element, and that is zirconium. Zirconium. Congratulations if you got that one correct. Well, that's our 10 questions, but of course, I have a bonus for you, and I thought this was a fun question to do. Uh, again, the Olympics are just around the corner, uh, coming up next month, and I have another Olympic question. Now, this was fascinating, so uh, let's talk about uh, the fascinating category of Olympic doping and drug suspensions. I know, right? All right, so here's our question. The very first Olympic drug suspension was in the 1968 Mexico City Games. It was uh, Hans Gunnar Liljewall. Sorry if I mispronounced that. I have it spelled as L-I-L-J-E-N-W-A-L-L. -L -L. Hans Gunnar Liljewall, a Swedish pentathlete. He was, what banned substance was he suspended for? All right, so once again, the first Olympic drug suspension was in the 1968 Mexico City Games. It was Hans Gunnar Lilienwall, a Swedish pentathlete. What banned substance was he suspended for? I don't know if you'll get this. I find it quite funny, actually. Uh, take a moment to think about it and let me know your guess here in just a moment. Okay, so the bonus question answer I am looking for. Uh, the first drug suspension in 1968 at the Mexico City Olympics was for alcohol. Yes, Hans Gunnar Lilienwall, a Swedish pentathlete, he enjoyed a few beers before every competition, and unfortunately in 1968 that was no longer allowed. So I am very sorry for Hans Gunnar. Um, I, know the feeling of just doing some basic yard games on a beer buzz. Um, yeah, like I play, uh, I don't know, uh, not cricket. I don't play cricket outside here on my own, but uh, a good croquet match with a beer is fun. So I feel sorry for Hans Gunnar there. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me. I hope you had a great time. I hope you got a perfect score. If you didn't, that's okay. Um, go have a beer to celebrate anyway. All right, so uh, thank you for joining me here on our Oceana Facebook page for another round of trivia. And again, I will see you next time.